so Arsenal will bring down the curtain on another excellent season here at Highbury. They may have lost their title to Chelsea, but they've won a legion of admirers for the style and sheer quality of their football. This famous old stadium, which of course will soon be consigned to history, has seen more goals this season than any other Premiership venue. An incredible average of almost four per game. Tony, they've had to concede the championship to Chelsea, but would you agree that Arsenal are second to no one when it comes to entertainment? I don't know about second to no one, but there's no doubt about the quality that we've seen at Highbury and uh, on their travels this season. I think Chelsea are certainly worthy winners of the Premiership, but if you're looking for a good game of football, good entertainment, you can do no better than come down here to Highbury because they always serve up a good game of football. On this day, 12 months ago, Arsenal were one game away from history, about to be crowned as the nation's first undefeated champions for more than 100 years. And Everton, well, they couldn't wait for the season to finish, having come dangerously close to being relegated. What a difference a year makes. Some interesting team news from both camps. First, Arsenal, and the headline is, he's back. Only on the subs bench to begin with, but I'm assured that Thierry Henry will be used at some stage of the game. Saul Campbell also returns after missing 17 matches with an ankle problem. Colo Toure drops down to the bench. Two more changes from the side that started against Liverpool on Sunday. Gilberto is injured, so Edu steps in for what's likely to be his final appearance at Ivory. And perhaps the same could be true of Dennis Bergkamp, whose future here is still in doubt. It's a normal 4-4-2 for Arsenal tonight, but the big plus in the back four is the inclusion of Sol Campbell. It is great to see him back. He is an excellent defender. I think the main thing for Sol is to get his fitness ready for the cup final, and all he'll be looking for tonight is to get that 90 minutes under his belt. Lovely balance to the midfield. It's got pace, it's got strength, it's got skill. In fact, I think it's got just about everything. And watch the wide players, though, because they will interchange positions with the front two. They won't just stay out wide. Don't be surprised to see Van Persie go out wide and Bergkamp drop deep, perhaps get the ball in midfield. If this is to be Dennis Bergkamp's last home game, I think he will turn in a quality performance tonight. Four changes for Everton. Richard Wright gets a rare opportunity in goal against the club where, of course, he won a championship medal. Alessandro Pistoni returns at left-back, and there are starting places also for James McFadden and James Beattie. Everton's leading scorer, Tim Cahill, is ruled out by a back injury, while Marcus Bent and Duncan Ferguson are both on the subs bench. Well, with those four changes in personnel, Everton have changed their formation slightly. Ideally, they would like it to be a 4-3-3, but as the game progresses, I think it would be more of a 4-5-1. It is the usual flat-back four for Everton, but it's the midfield where the key, it's a key area for them, and that's where the game will be won or lost. Lee Carsley's taken the rollover from Thomas Gravis and does it extremely well. He will hold just in front of the back four and protect them. Watson and Arteta will play close to him. They'll try and make it a tight midfield three, and McFadden and Kilban will make it a five when they haven't got the ball. When they do get the ball, and this is my big concern tonight, they've got to get up and help James Beattie. You can't let him be isolated. When he does get the ball, he's got to keep hold of it and let the midfield players join. Well, the great man's timing has always been impeccable, hasn't it? Just ten days away from the FA Cup final, Thierry Henry makes an unexpected return to give everyone at Arsenal a huge boost. And in case you'd forgotten, he is still the Premiership's leading goal scorer. Arsenal have maintained their incredible record of finishing either first or second in each of the eight full seasons since Arsene Wenger here took charge. But as you may have read in the press, he believes that David Moyes is the man who deserves to be named as Manager of the Year for the way he's transformed Everton in such spectacular style. Alan Wiley is the man in charge of what's the longest-running fixture in the history of England's top division. These two clubs have been playing each other for over 50 years. Well, Everton were able to sit back and relax on Sunday while Arsenal gave them a final push into the Champions League by ending Liverpool's challenge. I think even the most fanatical Reds fans would have to uh, agree that Everton did enough to merit finishing fourth. Tony, your old club has been in a Champions League qualifying place for the last seven months now, so really no one can say they don't deserve their moment of glory. Well, I don't even think the Liverpool fans will argue with that one, Alan. Well, perhaps they might do, but... Um... 
20 years ago today came the tragedy at Bradford's Valley Parade, which will now be marked with a moment's silence. serving clubs in England's top division stand shoulder to shoulder tonight in more ways than one providing Everton come through the qualifying round they and Arsenal will be taking on the elite of European football in next season's Champions League and just how good does that sound Everton will get us underway on an unseasonably chilly May evening here in North London Arsenal's renowned playing surface looking better than ever though no wonder Paul Burgess won the Premiership's Groundsman of the Year award. No excuses for the players tonight. The pitch does look absolutely magnificent. You've got to get it into feet, and why the ball will skim out a play like that one there from Pistoni. But it is a great credit to the groundsman. They have managed to recover the pitch because I saw it mid-season. Looked like it was being worn for the, for the first time in many a year. But it does look magnificent tonight. And I know both teams have effectively finished their season in terms of finishing fourth and second. So this will be a very competitive game tonight. Lobo with the headed clearance. Looked on by McFadden. Straight to Sol Campbell. A big cheer from the fans when his name was read out before the uh, kickoff. He's missed 17 games in all since being injured at the start of February against Manchester United. It's McFadden again for Everton. Happy to see the ball cross the line for their first corner. A shame he didn't get the crossing. Watson and Arteta have got into the middle. Set for the corner, though. David Weir has scored his first goal for more than three years against Newcastle at the weekend. With the confidence to come forward again. And it's in his direction as well. He ducked under it. And finds Arteta. Spanish player's cross could have been dangerous. Back in by Carsley. And easy for Jens Lehmann. Kept nine clean sheets in his last 11 games since he regained his place in Arsenal's goal from Almunia. And this uh, really new partnership at the heart of Arsenal's defence, Senderos and Campbell side by side. It's been Senderos and uh, Toure for so long, of course. Pistoni restored to left back in the Everton side. He's lost his place in recent weeks. The air was challenged, the referee allowing play to go on with Everton in possession with Yobo. And now Hibbert has had a very consistent season for them at right back. Here he is again. Watson on the overlap. Well led by Campbell, whose aerial power, of course, will be a, an extra vital factor for Arsenal. There's a good ball for Ateta. And who might have done better? Good chance, wasn't it? Lovely run from James Beatty. Decoy run, watch Beatty. He goes one way and then the gap appears. I thought he could have done better there. Got a strike it perhaps on his left foot. Tried to curl it with his right foot. Credit to Lehman though, in the right position. Uh, Tata, as you saw, one of several Everton players whose immediate future is in doubt. He's uh, on loan officially from Real Sociedad in the Spanish league. And Everton are yet to sit down with him and discuss the possibility of a permanent transfer. So a lot of the players out there tonight don't know what their immediate futures will be. And that includes, of course, one notable man in the Arsenal ranks in Dennis Bergkamp, though uh, Arsene Wenger has said in his match notes in tonight's official programme that he intends to sit down with the Dutchman in the summer and discuss a new deal. Bergkamp the target for that through ball, one back by Jovo, Carsley, and behind Hibbert, Arsenal's throw. Remarkably, if Everton win tonight and in their final game away to Birmingham on Sunday, they'll actually equal the number of victories they enjoyed last season when, of course, they won the title in record-breaking style. Here's Van Persie. Perez. On to 
Lauren. Percy again. Now Patrick Vieira. Into Edu. Bergkamp. Clever. How many times have we seen him do that? Dennis Bergkamp just opens his body up, tries to curl it towards the top corner. It had to be patient, Arsenal, because it wasn't anyone in the middle. Just gets in that little area, creates his own space, and he's trying to whip it to the top corner. See it lovely from this angle. I've seen him so score so many goals over the years. Not this time. He scored when Arsenal beat Everton 4-1 at Goodison back in August. And at that stage, I must say, the uh, many pessimistic forecast for Everton's season looked as though they could come true. Remember, they'd lost Wayne Rooney, Thomas Rodzinski as well. They'd been a building upheaval, financial problems. They'd set close to the wind in terms of relegation in the previous campaign and all looked far from rosy, which makes the way this season has turned out all the more remarkable. I think I was one of them, Alan, that first game when they did lose to Arsenal. Heavy defeat, I really feared for them. And Percy, good challenge by Yovo, Arsenal's corner. Good tackle from Yovo, had to win the ball. It's a good run from Van Percy. It's before Burkamp to see him. All about timing, and was spot on with that. Perez will take the kick, Senderos and Campbell both run to the near post area. It's an easy take for Richard Wright, playing just his 11th game of the season in Everton's goal. An almost kick downfield has gone straight through to his opposite number, Lehman. He finds Bergkamp. Lauren, Edu, and certainly will be the Brazilian Edu's final game here at Highbury. He has said he intends to leave in the summer. He's a good servant to the club, isn't he, Edu? I think they will miss him. Sanderos with the ball over the top, straight through again to Richard Wright. Now Pistoni. Everton have qualified for Europe for the first time since they won the FA Cup ten years ago. And it's 25 years since they last qualified through their league position. Fourth is the highest they've ever finished since the Premiership was formed. What a fantastic job, isn't he, David Moyes? Can't praise him enough, really. From that dreadful start they had in the first game to qualify for the Champions League is an outstanding achievement. You can talk about Mourinho, Wenger, Ferguson, all their good seasons. I think David Moyes has done a brilliant job. Sixth, incidentally, was the uh, previous best Everton uh, to achieve. That was under Joe Royal some nine years ago. Lauren under pressure from Kilban. Arteta keeps the pressure going, but Arsenal pop the ball about. Oh, to that moment, so Sanderos gives it away. What a mistake that was to let in Beatty. Got away with it, didn't he, Sanderos? I think Beatty got a nasty whack as well from Sol Campbell. Just trying to pass it across to his defensive partner, trying to take it early, BT. Did get a whack from uh, Sol Campbell, I think he's okay though. Jackson wins it back for Everton, then runs into trouble in the considerable shape of Vieira. They do. Here's Bergkamp. And they just back away, Everton inviting the ball to Van Persie, who completes a superb move in brilliant style. It's gone. The two Dutch masters, young and old, combine to give Arsenal yet another goal, their 80th in the Premiership this season. Well, I said he'd turn it on tonight, didn't I, Dennis Bergkamp? But Everton have only got themselves to blame. Fantastic play. What's this run from Van Persie? And the through ball is absolutely brilliant from Dennis Bergkamp. Because anyone can pass the ball between two defenders, but it's all about the weight. Look at the weight. He's only got to stroke it in the corner. The through ball is absolutely brilliant. Good finish from Van Persie. It was all about Dennis Bergkamp. Van Persie's fifth goal in his last eight games. It's the first time, by the way, that uh, Van Persie and Bergkamp have started together in a Premiership match. And we've just seen what they're capable of. Could it be, however, a short-lived partnership? Everton have been rocked as so many teams have throughout the last eight or nine months by an early Arsenal goal. And when Arsenal score first, 
They usually win just one defeat in the last 70 games in which they've taken the lead. Just a throw, yes. Carsley. Gilbo. Good turn by McFadden. I think they've made a bright start, Everton, generally, but it just proves against a top-class team, you cannot give possession away in midfield, because they're just so good, they exploit it, Arsenal. And we've already seen examples of their one and two touch and their movement. Spoke about it at the start of the game. You ask me if it is second to none, you're probably right, Alan, because when they do pass it one and two touch, there aren't many better teams. So evident with that goal, superb stuff. Well, I thought Arsenal's football in the first half here on Sunday against Liverpool was as good as anything I've seen all season. Senderos on to Campbell. Arsenal have won 10 of their last 11 games in League and Cup. Here's Bergkamp. From McFadden. Well, Camp didn't think so. And almost retaliated then. He did. Free kick to Everton. And he's got that side to his game, hasn't he? Dennis Burkamp. We've seen it over the years. Can't take that away from him. Just a bit disappointed he didn't get the free kick in the first place. Richard Wright's almost uh, opening task of the game to pick the ball out of his neck. And the ground where, of course, he won the double in his only season as an Arsenal player. Senderos got up well, Vieira. Edu. Bergkamp. Oh, what a ball, what a ball for Reyes. Van Persie pulls short, it's gone to Pires. Brilliant save by Wright, but Pires knocks home the rebound. They may be running but they're turning on championship style already, Arsenal. There's another fantastic finish from Robert Pires. But again, Dennis Bergkamp's ball is sheer quality. They don't know what to do with him, Everton. Look where he picks the ball up. Tony Hibbert's ball watching. But look at the weight of pass in behind. Good play from Reyes. He's actually trying to pick out Van Persie. I think that's a good save from Richard Wright. And he's so unfortunate. It's a precision header, isn't it, from Pires? Look at that ball again from Burkham. Good save from Wright. And that is a difficult header from Perez. Take nothing away from him. To get it on target is difficult enough. Because it bounces viciously. He helps it back towards goal. Couldn't have put it any better position. He scored against Liverpool with a spectacular free kick. He scored against Everton. What a spectacular header. 16 goals for the season now for the man in possession, Robert Pires. Only 12 minutes gone, and Arsenal already two goals to the good. The sort of start that Everton must have feared. They had their big emotional moment, of course, at the weekend, beating Newcastle and then seeing Arsenal beat Liverpool to ensure that Everton would finish fourth. And in all honesty, it must be difficult for their players to pick it up again against such excellent opponents as Arsenal. But they're professionals, they're paid to do a good job, and I'm sure David Moyes will remind them of that. They've got to do better than this. I think that would have been his biggest concern tonight, David Moyes. I think that's exactly what Arsene Wenger would have been looking for, for his players to go out and try and get three, four, maybe five goals. And carry on in this vein of form, they will do. I think it's important from Everton's point of view, they've obviously had a good week, they must have been celebrating, but they are professional, and the last thing they need is to get beat 4 5 nil. Doesn't do them around any good at all, and they don't want to be chasing shadows for 90 minutes. I think they've just got to get a bit tighter, they've got to get some tackles in, and generally push up as a team. Arsenal have won the five home games in a row they'd had before tonight, scoring 16 goals in the process. So they're well on course for Highbury to maintain its uh, four goals a game average for the season. And we haven't had the first quarter of an hour yet. Rare mistake by Pires. They are dominating the possession, aren't they, Arsenal? 
was a good start, like I said, from Everton in the first five minutes or so. As soon as that goal's gone in, total dominance from Arsenal. Arsenal's phenomenal scoring record, that's 81 now, but they have let in 34, that's uh, already eight goals more than they conceded in the whole of last season, so there is a glimmer of hope in that statistic for Everton, and of course David Moyes' team are not prolific scorers themselves. But they're not, and I don't think the formation allows them to be, when you play a 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, like they have for most of the season, or a 4-5-1. The key, one, the key statistic there is the one up front. When you've only got one player up front, it does make it difficult. Poor old James Beatty challenging for the ball now. Even if you flick the ball on, there aren't too many players going to get on the end of it. He's hardly had a touch apart from that uh, first mistake by Senderos that gave him possession. Piero loses out to Arteta. Gulban to his uh, left, McFadden to his right. Again, it's half a chance for Everton. Better still this time from James Beattie. Arteta's looked lively when he's got the ball. Does well, Beattie, because he comes inside. Again, trying to curl it into the far corner. Comfortable save again. And Percy. Edu. Now Laura. On to Perez. Good optimistic that was. I don't think Thierry Henry would have got that one. I don't think Linford Christie in his prime would have got that one. <laughs> he waits, he watches, he wonders. <laughs> and as usual, he's got an expression to sum up his feelings. He knows we're watching him. And what a fantastic player. It'd be nice to see him back on the pitch. Been a great critic to the Premiership since his arrival. Not entirely sure David Moyes would agree with your emotions there, but uh, <laughs> I he certainly won't. <laughs> The last person you want to see on the pitch. Yeah, two and down in the corner now. You don't really want to see the Premiership's leading scorer coming on. Sunderos, Vieira, on to Van Persie. And it reaches Reyes. Seems equally at home in that uh, wide position on the left as he does as a central striker. So many excellent young players, Arsene Wenger has brought in in his time here, as well as the established stars. Well, Dennis Bergkamp is trying to send out a message, a reminder to his manager of just how useful he can still be to Arsenal Football Club, who couldn't have done much better. I don't think he needs to, Alan. I honestly feel that Arsene Wenger knows exactly what he can do. He works with him every day. I think the only question when you get into your mid-30s is have you still got the fitness, have you still got the desire? I think the answer is quite simply yes. And I'll be very, very surprised if they don't sign him on another value contract. I think the fans will demand that. Perhaps eventually, long-term, there might be a place for him on the coaching staff because he is a big presence, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. If he's still here, he'll celebrate ten years at Arsenal in a few weeks' time. As Carsley breaks forward for Everton and loses out to Campbell. Now Vieira. And his touch from Van Persie. The elbow was uh, very tight to him, forcing it through to McFadden. back to give the free kick for the initial challenge by James McFadden. There's Edu. Vieira. Oh, it was almost another excellent ball. Everton struggling to cope with the pace and the quality of Arsenal's football at the moment. What about that as well? A little back flick from Reyes. And Vieira storms through to find Van Persie. Outside is the final outcome. Lovely move again, lovely football. What about the flick from Reyes? Yeah, that's called showboating, isn't it? Fantastic one, too. Strength from 
Vieira as well. A little bit lucky when he did eventually get through him. Watson looking for Beatty. Senderos got there first. He needed to make the interception, taking up a good position, James Beatty at the far post. And get him the service, he will score but goals, James Beatty for Everton. Although I do think we'll see the best of him next season. A difficult opening first season, or half a season for him. It was difficult setting him into your new club. I think we'll see the best of Beatty next season. Certainly good enough to play for Everton. Everton have lost their last three away games, and in fact they've only managed one win in the last ten on the road. That was at Aston Villa a couple of months ago now. But uh, generally speaking, their away form has been a massive improvement on last season. What a fantastic roller coaster ride he's had. Seventh in his first season, they almost reached Europe. 17th last season, they were almost relegated. Now they have qualified for Europe. And, by the way, he is the first Everton manager to finish above Liverpool in the league table for 18 years. Albert Kendall, the last one, I take it. Well, you know your Everton history better than <laughs> I do, TC. <laughs> I knew you wasn't going to join in that one, Alan. Here's Weir. Gets it back from Arteta. Yildo. Yes, Everton actually won the league that season, and Liverpool were runners up in the days when uh, Merseyside truly dominated the championship. And I guess you could say over the last 12 months, that mantle has moved to the capital. Arsenal no longer have it all their own way in their own backyard. A certain team from uh, a dozen miles west of here are going to have a major influence, I guess, for many years to come. There's no doubt about that. Let's not forget the team who's in the Champions League as well. They've done well to get there. Well, well finding Watson. Centre from the left. There's certainly plenty of width. Everton attack. And you don't want to give the ball away that cheaply to Arsenal. And Percy picks out Reyes. He's onside. Javiera. Perez. There's Lauren. Senderos, Patrick Vieira. Pires. And Arsenal just stroking it about with such apparent ease. It looks so simple, but it's so hard to achieve this kind of football. Well, I think football is a simple game. And if you can play one and two touch as well as what Arsenal do, that's why it looks so simple. It's all about movement, and as we saw with both goals, it's about the weight of pass as well. As I mentioned it, anyone could play one and two touch, but if you smash the ball at someone, you can't then play the next ball one or two touch. That's what Arsenal do so well. When they do pass it to their teammate, they just stroke it in and allow them to play the next ball one and two touch. And the movement is exemplary, it's fantastic, particularly in midfield, the, the wide positions and up front. I wish we'd started counting the passes in this move. Not make it through there, I think, for Lee Carsley. Lauren. Still, Everton can't get it back. Here's Van Persie. Oh, you can see, he had only one thought in his mind at the end of that string of Arsenal passes. I think Lauren wanted to ball back and gave it to him. There's only one thing on Van Persie's mind. Watch Lauren. Doesn't stand and watch it. Goes inside, makes a great run, wants it back. There's only one thing on Van Persie's mind. There's Lauren on the penalty spot. <laughs> what the cross? Well, he's got every right to have a shot, though, Van Persie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everton 
they've got to do their best to try and get some kind of foothold in this game before half-time. They've been very much second best. Here's BT. Kilban. Useful cross. Watson goes for it with Lehman. And I think probably fouled the keeper. I think it was a good take. Confident take times this season where he has looked a bit dodgy from crosses. Not a big pressure from Watson. Keeps hold of the ball. Arsenal finally slowed it down. Back in, but straight to Edu. And had so much time to bring it down. And he missed out on Vieira. Kilban. Good challenge by Senderos. Very good tackle. He's been quality, hasn't he, since he got into the team. But here's Arteta for Everton. Good strike. The ball was going wide, I think. Took a deflection for a corner. I think it was off Senderos again, wasn't it? The deflection. How vital was it? Vieira, who gets caught in possession, strikes it early. It was enough to take it wide. Good spot from Alan Wiley. That's a good header of the ball. Here behind him. There goes there, too, on the far post. Managed to keep possession. Watson got a shot in. Carsley beaten to it by Cole. And this is where Arsenal use their pace to such great effect. Oh, what a superb ball! Pistoni's covering was absolutely textbook. Well, it had to be. Again, Everton corner. Look how fast they break Arsenal. What about this for a ball again? In behind the Everton defence. Perhaps a foul by Reyes in the end on Pistoni. Not been given. Good covering by the left back. Ben Camp hits it. Just as well for Everton, Davy Weir was in the way. Well, he done well, Davy Weir. He has to make up a lot of ground. Look how much ground. Been obstructed originally by Vieira. Does well to get anywhere near him. I do. Senderos. Yeah, it was a lovely layoff. Bergkamp spots the run from Van Persie and picks him out. It was a difficult ball to control for the youngster. Goal kick. Well, these two teams have thoughts only for the Champions League next season. But of course, there are four teams down the bottom of the table whose thoughts are very much on the Premier League. Survival Sunday. You can see all the action unfold on Sky Sports 1. At 2, we start. Fulham against Norwich on 1. And then on Sky Sports Extra, at 3, Southampton against Manchester United. Goal for Arsenal, they'll lead 2 0 here. And poor ball, Arteta with the interception. Now Pistoni. Everton throw. Kilban. Carsley. Pistoni. Good chance again by Senderos, who just seems to get better and better with every game he plays. He does go to ground, he does invariably win the ball as well. What a ball, third camp, another one, man from Vieira and Van Persie. This time, couldn't finish another sweeping move. Great football again from Arsenal. Reyes wanted the ball on the left. Again, Van Persie trying to shoot. 
Edu. Vieira. There's Perez. <laughs> waiting for Laura to join in. Here he is. Now Vieira. Edu. Brilliant skill from the Brazilian, and he then gets it away to Carsley. He's done him well to wrestle back possession. Vieira. Third count. Reyes. Oh, it's another lovely ball from Reyes. Actually, go. Oh. Oh. Disappointing cross in the end. But he does make such great runs, doesn't he, Ashley Cole? Always looking to get him from that left wing position. And Diogo does well, stands his ground. Disappointing end to the move, but again, great movement from Arsenal. Here's Pistoni. Watson. Kill Van. Easy again for Raymond. It's too near the goalkeeper. We're going to put crosses in, at least give James Beattie something to go for. Yeah, another brilliant ball. Reyes. And Percy free, edge of the box. There's Vieira. Oh, wonderful strike. Lovely dummy, wasn't it, from Edu? Gets perhaps one of these a season, doesn't he, Patrick Vieira? They all want the ball. There's a dummy. Superb stuff. How close was it? Very close, wasn't it? Unfortunately, he cuts across the ball, Vieira. You've got to do that to try and get it in the top corner. Just puts too much in it. Very close, though. Exhibition football so far from Arsenal. It's like watching a footballing version of the Harlem Globetrotters. Arteta. And this clearance finds Perez. Reyes. And Fatten didn't let him have an easy ride, but he still finds the perfect through ball for Bergkamp. Now Van Persie, Yogo's tackle. Van Persie's beaten him. Second attempt gets it clear. And a bad, uh, not a bad ball either for Arteta. Well, he knows his side. Uh, very much second best at the moment. There's no doubt about that. I think he will be pleased, David Moyes, that he's only 2-0. Because if they can get a goal back, Everton, it will change things please just to get in 2-0 at half-time, perhaps reorganise, he has got options on the bench. Likes a bench, and Ferguson can come on. And they'll only be worth, worth a while doing that if you're still only 2-0 down. Any more goals and makes it difficult, whoever you've got on the bench. Obviously just one more game left, of course, after tonight, and that's also away. They uh, play Bolton Wanderers at the Reebok on Sunday. Everton has 61 points, incredibly, that's 22 points more than they had at this stage last season. Kilban winning it back for them. But uh, couldn't keep possession for long. Perez, Edu. And the Arsenal fans find their voices again. Reyes finds Campbell, and to Vieira. An orthodox return ball from Pires. Lauren. Reyes. Oh, lovely stuff from Vieira. And off they go again, Arsenal. 
header. This is Pires. Lauren. Cheers, greeting every accurate ball. And most of them are. Pedro switches the angle to Lauren on the right. Third cap. Wonderful stuff, isn't it? Beautiful little triangles. And then the devastating through ball for Cole, whose back heel was brilliant, and Percy couldn't get there. Reyes did. Goal kick, but what a move again. And what a goal that would have been. It's that run from Ashley Cole. Great vision from Vieira. Ashley Cole does brilliant. He was running out of ground, tries to back heel. Both Van Percy and Reyes can't get a shot on target. And the uh, self-boring, boring arse. Yeah, I'm going to say the self-mocking chant rolls around Ivory again. Nothing boring about this team and the way they play football. <laughs> All that diving header. There's Sol Campbell. The cup final place is up for grabs, of course, so there's plenty of incentive for Arsenal to uh, keep playing this game to the best of their ability. I don't think we'll see them easing off, particularly people like Sol Campbell. Remarkably enough, his cup final place, far from assured. Here's Edu. Lovely ball over the top again, just too far this time for Reyes. He stopped his run, didn't he, Reyes? All he was worried about Richard Wright coming out. If he'd have continued his run, he would have got the ball. Arsenal in this kind of move, but uh, I think we've seen evidence again, Tony, this season of just how important defensive stability is. Everton, for instance, have actually scored less goals than they scored in the whole of last season. We'll come back to that because here's another Arsenal goal on the way. Patrick Vieira with the little dink over the goalkeeper makes it 3 0. You don't need to mention the man who's involved again, everyone cuddling him. But this is an exquisite finish from Patrick Vieira. Look at the one-touch passing. There's Bergkamp involved at the start. Back to him again. Look at that through ball. And he just makes it look so easy. And it's not an easy finish. Again, way of pass from Dennis Bergkamp. But that is not an easy finish from Patrick Vieira. He makes it look easy. Look how big Richard Wright is. Stands up. He does everything right. He still scoops it over him. 3-0 to Arsenal. Who can say they don't deserve it? It's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Reminiscent of Gudjonsson's goal for Chelsea at Old Trafford last night. Well, I was going to make a point about uh, Arsenal's defensive problems this season, but if you can score goals the way they have in the opening half an hour or so here, who needs to defend that? I guess they could argue. But it is a fact, though, that that's something they've got to work on again next season. As I say, Everton, scoring less goals than they did last season, have done so much better because they let fewer in. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I don't think there's ever been any question about Arsenal having the ability to score goals. But if you look at the top team this season, and there's no doubt that Chelsea have been the top team, they've got the best defensive record. And I think that's what Arsenal just got to look to improve next season. But I think looking at Sender Senderos... Sol Campbell and Toure, if they can keep the players fit, I think they will do a lot better next season. Perhaps a goalkeeping position as well, because I think that's been a problem for them. Lehman's been excellent the last 10 or 12 games. But if they can be a bit more solid as a back four and with the goalkeeper, there's no doubt in the quality they've got going forward. But I think they might need to get Dennis Bergkamp signed up very quickly, because he's been involved in all three goals. Easy to suggest that if Arsenal don't, somebody else will, but he uh, has gone on record, Bergkamp, as saying that if he does not get 
the offer of a new contract here at Highbury, he will almost certainly retire from the game. And that would be a big loss. He's far too good for that. Well, I can't see him playing for another English club. About time we've seen a tackle go in. Is it 40 odd minutes? First real tackle. Roman Manus here from Lee Carsley. No yellow card. Probably the right decision. I think Everton have got to start to get a few tackles in. They've got to try and squeeze up as a team. But of course it's so difficult because if you squeeze up, it leaves gaps in behind. And that's where the goals are coming from. Another tackle from Carsley. Another free kick. I don't think he'll get away with another one after that. In fact, he might have had a bit too much to say to referee Alan Wiley. I think that's what he's saying to him. Second tackle in about, what, 30 seconds. Catches him on the ankle. Good skill from Edu, wasn't it? And a bit of verbals just after that. And I'm sure he's saying to him, no more tackles, I don't want to book you, but if I have to, I will do. Full marks to Alan Wiley for dealing with that so sensibly, though. Yeah, there's many referees who no doubt would have uh, ran this a yellow card very quickly there. Sometimes you've just got to talk to the player and that's what he's done. No doubt it's the last one, you know. Carsley's 100th appearance for Everton tonight. He doesn't want to mark it in the wrong way. Well, the Arsenal fans just reminding their manager of what they think of a certain Dennis Bergkamp. Here's Campbell. Now Perez. Louder. Back to Campbell. Third camp. Lovely ball. Edu. That was a rather cynical trick by Yobo. And that could lead to further problems for Everton here. Pirès scored from a very similar position to this uh, against Liverpool on Sunday. Could be a bit of fight about who takes it. We've got so many options. And Bergkamp score from this range. Reyes. Pirès, you mentioned. Van Persie's put the ball down, he seems to want to shoot from everywhere tonight. Choice of four, and they've told Pires to go away. <laughs> One thing is clear, it clearly won't be a quick free kick. Mr Wiley made that obvious. It's Van Persie. Oh, that was unusual. Persie's almost standing on the line. Oh, great save by right hand from Reyes. With two fantastic saves from Richard Wright. I think that's possibly the better one, because he's got Pires right in front of him. Wonderful strike comes in, but that's at a nice height for Richard Wright. Swerving, again, he's got a defender in front of him as well. Perhaps I'm not doing him a credit. Two good saves from Richard Wright. And he'll be pleased with that. A few question marks about him in his Arsenal spell. And when he went to Everton, and that'll do his confidence no end of good. Arsenal have certainly been the scourge of Merseyside these last few days. They played just as well as this in the first half against Liverpool. And they've got an extra goal in the first 45 minutes against Everton. Oh, he's a lucky boy, isn't he, Yobo? He just cannot do that against this Arsenal team. There's no end-of-season feel about this, not from Arsenal's point of view anyway. They're in the mood, aren't they? They certainly are. It's been a privilege to be here tonight as well. The quality of football has been superb. Let's hope it continues into the second half. I'm sure it will do. If it does get a bit dull, they've got the likes of Thierry Omri to come on. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> what a great time to be an Arsenal supporter. Well, I'm certain we will see Henri at some stage. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, is there? They need to get him on as well. I think if you win him 3-0, I'm not quite sure he'll play the whole of the second half, but they, they need to give him a bit of sharpness, a bit of fitness, and get him ready for the FA Cup final, because that is the major game left for Arsenal this season. Lauren. 
to slip and still retain possession. A minute to half time. Everton's players will be glad to hear that whistle, but maybe not the uh, admonishment that will surely come their way from their manager. He's a fiercely competitive Scott. It looks as though he's already lining up a few ear bashings. It'll be interesting to see what tactics he does use at half time, 3 0 down. Does he have a right go at them? Or does he suggest get out there? You can do a lot better than that, I know you can. Try and get a couple of goals in the second half. Might need to make a couple of changes. It's a matter of pride as well now for Everton, isn't it? it certainly is. Here's BT. He's had a couple of half chances, hasn't he, James BT? This is very difficult. He's coming down, he's off balance, leaning back. There's only one place the ball's going to go. Two goals in 12 games for BT since his move from Southampton in January. Sanderos has given it away to kill back. Yeah, it comes to win it back. again Campbell gets it back from Cole Arsenal now just seeing out the half looking to preserve their three goal advantage which could in truth have been even greater but the fine saves by Richard Wright former Arsenal keeper have kept Everton in with at least a, a slim hope here but it is slim very slim virtuoso performance from a wonderful footballer Dennis Bergkamp had a part to play in all three Arsenal goals and what superb goals they were Robin van Persie on target first then Pires with a head out from distance at the end of a sweet move Patrick Vieira with that lovely little dink over the goalkeeper making it 3-0 another wonderful 45 minutes of top quality football from Arsenal. They lead by three goals to nil. No change in the commentary box though. Tony Cotty and Alan Parry. And if you're an Evertonian, well you better look away now. Because just when you think things can't get any worse, it's about to. Thierry Henry has joined the battle. He's been out for five matches with a groin injury. Before he was hurt, he scored nine goals in six games, and he's got 30 for the season. He's still the Premiership's leading goal scorer with 25. Matthew Flomini also on in place of Patrick Vieira. Henri replaces Robin van Persie. And as you can see, Everton have also made a change. And Marcus Pent is the man who has replaced James Beattie. Arsenal 3, Everton 0. As referee Alan Wiley gets the second half underway. Arsenal with just four defeats in the Premiership all season against Manchester United home and away, and away games against Liverpool and Bolton. Strangely enough, they've only got four points fewer than they had at this stage last season, and of course they won the title and remained undefeated. It just underlines what a fantastic campaign Chelsea have had. Bent gets his first touch since replacing BT, who will be very disappointed. He hasn't had that many first-team opportunities of late, so uh, to be taken off at half-time, unless there's an injury we don't know about, a real blow for him. I feel for him a little bit, because he didn't get the best of service in uh, James BT. It is tough up there on your own. They've made the change, Everton. And one thing Marcus Bent will provide for them is a bit more pace up front. If Arsenal are a bit sloppy at the back, like there was at times in the first half, and I'm sure Bent will exploit that. He's had a good season for Everton. He'll have a point to prove as well. 
coming on now. I think all the substitutions are just straight forward swaps, position-wise. David Weir's clearance. Pistoni with a good ball, but Fadden fails to take it in his stride. That's disappointing. He's in a good position there, James McFadden. He would have, could have got hold of the ball. But already Everton looking a bit sharper at the start of this second half. I think I mentioned the fact that it took 40 minutes to put a tackle in. I think it was about 40 seconds when the first one came in from Lee Carsley there. There's Cole. Everton have held on to fourth place for the last four months and they haven't been out of a Champions League qualifying position since early September. There have been times when uh, they seem to have lost the way, they certainly lost a few games, but crucially for them, the other challengers, notably Liverpool and of course Bolton Wanderers, Middlesbrough and so on, all faltered when Everton did. Is Yobo. to Pistoni. Perez takes it off him and finds the magnificent Bergkamp who finds another glorious ball. Now that the referee had a long look at the uh, challenge by Yobo and Henri and decided there was nothing wrong with it. Well, I thought it was a penalty. would be interested to see it again. It looked like he clipped him to me, Yobo. Here's Bent at the other end for Everton. take Thierry Henry long to get involved, did it? Been on the field precisely three minutes and might well have earned Arsenal a penalty. And now he's offside. Well, that was tight as well. Very, very tight. I think for the original one, I think Yobo should have stepped up. Does he clip Henry? What's the skill? What's Yobo's trailing leg? Does he catch him? I think he does. Might well have been looking for it slightly, Henry. I think that was a foul. There's Watson for Everton. Could be a useful cross. Bent was waiting for it, but Sanderos got that ahead of him. Fallon. Watson's done well. Hibbert. Bent on the far post. Sanderos equal to it again. And Perez has got the pace to uh, change defence into attack in an instant here. Glorious ball for Reyes, who couldn't quite meet it with his head as he intended. Again, that's going to be Everton's biggest problem. They've got to push forward and try and get a goal, try and get back into the match. As they do, all sorts of spaces are going to open up. And as we've already seen at the start of this second half, counter-attacking-wise, Arsenal is simply a different class. Foul's gone against Arteta. I can confirm, by the way, that James Beattie did go off because of an injury. It wasn't a tactical substitution, he has a knee problem. Real stop start uh, career at Goodison so far for him. Of course, he didn't help himself by getting sent off against Chelsea in what was only his uh, seventh appearance for Everton. And that led to a three match ban. There's Bergkamp, Henri. Let's come through the Pires. It's four. But this time they're a bit fortunate, Arsenal. Perez is an offside because it comes off an Everton defender. Lovely build-up play again. Omri's the man who keeps hold of the ball. It's Lee Carsley, isn't it? He wasn't offside anyway, regardless of who it come off. But again, the finishing, they just make it look so simple, Arsenal. I think what's always impressive is when you get in those positions, don't thrash it, don't try and smash it. Just stroke it in the corner. There's Pires, knows exactly where the goal is, just cycled it in. Great finish. He's on a hat trick. He's now on 17 goals for the season. Last season was his best ever for goals uh, as an Arsenal player. He scored 19, so he's got a chance of equaling or even bettering that. <laughs> Lauren on to the goal scorer Pires. Oh, brilliant football again, brilliant. And in steps Everton's Arteta to win it back for them. The Spaniard was fouled. Oh, yeah, the 
entrenchment, Flamini. Now Watson. Good challenge by Campbell. Great skill by Reyes. Third count. Here's Reyes again. Off Yogo for a corner. Well, I think Everton have got to be very, very careful. Because they quite easily could concede six or seven the way things are going. It's not necessarily that they've been that bad, it's just that Arsenal are that good. Against Liverpool, of course, Arsenal couldn't sustain it in the second half. Liverpool came back very well against them. But a four-goal deficit for Everton here, almost impossible to change. side as well I think it's the right decision but again the vision from Burkham watch Henri goes in front of the defender when it's played he's not offside just fouls to get a touch in it brilliant ball win great run from Henri I'll be surprised if he doesn't get a goal before the night's over Thierry Henri Everton have got to be careful, otherwise they'll go under to a big score here. And it's big enough already at four. But there's no sign of Arsenal easing off. I think it was the start of the season, not the finish. Ten days' time, they've got an FA Cup final. And one more league game after this. But they're enjoying themselves, you can see that. Louder, brilliant. Just only got back well. You almost feel sorry for Everton. Well, you do. I think you'd be looking at making a change at the moment rather than an attacking change to make a defensive change. Perhaps bring on Alan Stubbs and go five at the back or something and just try and damage limitation, really. There's no way they're going to get back into this match now. Here goes Thierry Henry. Tees it up for Bergkamp. Crowd would love to see him score tonight. We'd love to say Dennis Bergkamp's got to get them on target, but after the match he's had tonight, very difficult to criticise him too much. Leaning back slightly. And again, he goes for the curler, doesn't go for power. Tries to curl it towards the top corner. Take the roof off if he gets a goal tonight. Arteta. Perez nips in to win it back. Throw in though for Everton. And a momentary release. Bergkamp. Off radio boat. goes for an Arsenal free kick. Or is it a throw? Yep, yeah, he's given the latter. Bowden. Sanderos gets his boot through it, good old-fashioned style. David Weir underneath it for Everton, Pistoni. Ooh, there's a late challenge there by Flamini. I think he might have to book him for that one, because it was late. He's not been that type of game. I think sometimes the referees don't have any choice. The ball's long gone and it's the trailing foot, isn't it? Cash is pissed only. I don't think Alan Wiley had any choice at all but to give the yellow card to Flamina. Only 21, the young Frenchman who uh, played seven games in a row before he picked up a thigh injury. least that's Arsene Wenger's name that rings around this famous old stadium and why not 
they appreciate the uh, quiet, studious university graduate from Strasbourg, a shy smile almost. I think he waved, didn't he? Did he wave to the crowd? No, he wouldn't be as demonstrative <laughs> as that, would he? Or was it just a smile? As well as his fantastic league record, either first or second in each of his eight full seasons, he's uh, hoping to win the FA Cup for what would be a fourth time. Amazing, isn't it? He's done fantastic. When he arrived in English football, many people were saying Arsene Wenger wasn't well known, but he's done a brilliant job. Now, can Everton get something back here? Bet was well placed for the cross, but it never reached him. Yoho. And we got lucky there. Now, Hibbert. Good ball from McFadden to Stoney. Get down to his outside, bent ahead of him. And we could see what Marcus Bent was trying, but it didn't come off. Edu. Bergkamp. Perfectly weighted ball as ever to the feet of Reyes. Pires, Lauren. Flamini, the challenge by Carsley. Marcus Bent rather carelessly gives it away, tries hard to win it back. And then Reyes presents it to Arteta. Spaniard. Kilvan. There's Lee Carsley. Everton indulging in a little bit of uh, possession football of their own. They haven't had too many opportunities tonight to do that. And might have won a free kick there, but the referees wave play on. And here come Arsenal again. Dennis Bergkamp. Reyes one side of him. It's come back to Pires, but a good challenge by Arteta. However, Reyes has it back again for the Gunners. Henri. Here's Edu. And Bergkamp. They just wait. They'll never do anything in a panic. They'll never do anything carelessly. Just wait for an opening, that's exactly what they do. If it's not on, don't play it, keep hold of it. Good possession football. And then just wait for a little bit of movement, injection of pace, and then they play the pass and play it superbly well. Coming up to an hour on the clock, and it's been 60 minutes of total domination by Arsenal. In a way, you'd have to say the scoreline impressive as it is, doesn't really reflect their superiority here. No, it doesn't. Could have been a lot worse for Everton. Perhaps still might be. Turning off for Marcus Bent. Flamini. With Senderos. Good ball. Howard. Edu. season and they are most certainly signing off in style and you get the impression that we haven't seen the end of the goal scoring yet still half an hour to play and layman's hardly had a thing to do he couldn't manage to keep that uh, ball on the pitch Arsenal are the only team in the uh, Premiership who've scored in every home game and Hardy has now seen a total of 70 goals for and against Arsenal this season. The 
That's the penultimate campaign, of course, at this famous old stadium, the uh, new Arsenal ground. Just a long goal kick away from here. Growing up a pace now. You can drive past it on your way to Highbury and see just how impressive it's going to be. Waiting to deliver the free kick here. I think Arsenal might be about to make another substitution. But in it goes anyway. And coming round the back, Kevin Kilvan almost got his head onto that. But it. Watson. Looks for Reyes, who took a risk then against McFadden. And it's that kind of night when everything's running for Arsenal until that moment, anyway. Yobo. from the Everton players. Just skimmed off the pitch, didn't it? Good run from Ben and from Carsley as well. Is that new? Good quick seat again by the Brazilian, now Dennis Bergkamp. Wonderful, how did he keep possession then? Now wins ball in. That might ask him to cross the ball there, wasn't it? They don't normally do that. Again, great skill from Dennis Bergkamp. There's what, two players, still got hold of the ball. Good ball from Lauren. Well, Robert Perez will not be getting his hat-trick because he's being substituted to a standing ovation from Highbury. Wonderful contribution he's made. Now he's being uh, kept in cold storage. Cesc Fabregas, the 18-year-old who's had a magnificent first season in English football, comes on in his place. It's his 44th appearance of the season, and he's only just turned 18. I've got to say, for someone so young, what a fantastic first season for him. Can only get better. Well, it's been a very uh, productive night for Arsene Wenger. He's uh, given Campbell a game, he's given Henri a game. He's got a couple of goals out of Perez, and now he's going to afford to rest him for the remainder of the match. And here goes Ben, trying to bring Everton back into the picture. <laughs> Wonderful defending by Campbell. Oh, but not the second time. He wasn't expecting the dross. He wasn't. It was a good tackle in the first place, though, wasn't it? Ben's got pace, I mentioned it. Got to get it right. And he did. Talking to pace, here's Henri, on to Reyes, their camp far post. Right, just about made the telling interception, now Flomini. And still Everton find those red shirts coming at them from all angles. And Edo tries his luck from the range. He's always rising that shot. Richard Wright was a little bit disappointing with the original one that came in from Reyes. He felt he should have caught it. He certainly hasn't been to blame for the four goals. Couldn't have done anything about them at all. The funny thing is, he's actually had a good game tonight. 4-0 down, though. Started uh, about half a dozen games back in January, Richard Wright, when Nigel Martin was injured. Made 22 appearances in his one season here after Arsenal signed him from Ipswich and won a League and Cup double. Senderos. Edu. Good ball. Reyes. Lovely ball. Thierry Henry. Good save. Yobo just about made sure it didn't reach the onrushing Fabregas. Another good save from Richard Wright. The last 
last thing you want to be a defender, particularly David Weir, is one-on-one -on -one with Thierry Henry. You know he's going to do you for pace. Good strike across the keeper, and a strong hand from Richard Wright. Yet another save. Manchester United will be cursing their luck because it did seem quite genuinely at one stage that Thierry Henry was very unlikely to be uh, fit enough in time to figure in Arsenal's FA Cup final squad. But providing he comes through this test tonight safely, it looks as though they'll have him available. I think there's been some smashing football play by Arsenal tonight. I think the two things that Arsene Wenger will be most pleased about is certainly Sol Campbell looking like he's going to play the whole game. Thierry Henry back in the team as well. Two big pluses for them. And here he goes. Oh, Yobo now three times has denied Henry. He has three times. I think he's worrying how many times Henry has been one-on-one -on -one with Yobo and with David Weir. He just can't afford a player of that class to be one against one. Reyes. Henry's there again. Lovely little ball. And Fabregas. Denied the opportunity to shoot. Again, runners. They had a player outside him, Henri. I think it was Bergkamp. Chose to come inside. And again, Yobo with a cover. It's a chilly evening here in North London, but Arsenal are warming us all up with the quality of their football. I don't suppose watching Evertonians would agree. Is that a handball? It was. Now, who gets to take the penalty? Henri or Bergkamp? that was interesting because I'm not sure that the assistant actually gave it there it's referee Alan Wiley who calls it was it the arm was it the chest it's definitely the arm looks like the arm to me they are complaining but I don't think the assistant gave it I think Alan Wiley gave that one there's a lot of discussion going on meantime in the Arsenal ranks as to who exactly will take this kick yeah. Well, I think I'm right in saying that Henri, if he's involved in being fouled or involved in the penalty, he doesn't take it. Normally, that's right. And what did Ted do? Yeah. What, what a nice touch. Appearance. What a nice touch. His last game at Highbury, he could mark with a goal. He hasn't scored here, by the way, for over 18 months. so far in the corner he can't keep it out gets his hand on it can't stop it going into the back of the net nice touch to see Edu taking the penalty could well be his last goal for the club 5-0 with 20 minutes left and a better memory for him than the last time he played against Everton back in November in a Carling Cup time and he broke his toe playing against them Arsenal 5, Everton 0. That is now 84 Premiership goals for the season for Arsene Wenger's team. 84. Back for the runners up. Arteta. Bet. It's a good effort from that uh, difficult angle. It was a good effort. I think he'll do well to score from that angle, though, Marcus Bent. Makes a good run. Just tries to strike it early. I think Lehman would have had that one covered. Been very disappointed to get beat from that position. And uh, Everton fans being taunted again. Champions League, they're having a laugh, is the cry from the Arsenal supporters. But they are. Almost, anyway, they've still got uh, a not inconsiderable hurdle of a qualifying round before they can uh, take their place in Europe's premier competition for what would be the first time in 34 years. Forget tonight, their season has been one of excellence and consistency. Alan Sandoros. 
Again, good covering, isn't it? From Zemiros. I think McFadden was just a bit angry with himself. He didn't run a bit earlier because he would have got the ball before Zemiros. The young man's covering has been excellent all night. a bit fortunate Steve Watson not to get a yellow card there wasn't a lot different to Flamini's there you go training leg catches him I'm sure the Arsenal players are argue what's the difference between that one and Flamini's one there goes Thierry Henry weaving his magical little patterns Reyes here's Henry again he's inviting enough ball the end of their heaviest defeat of the season and Arsenal aren't finished with them yet oh, lovely football brilliant it's worse to be overindulgent in the end but they've won it back Everton look as though they've completely given up the ghost now Uh, just as it looks as though Everton are going th to uh, threaten a period of possession again, Arsenal win it back. It's better to lose it in the style that Arsenal have. There may be no great consolation that to Arsene Wenger, but I'm sure, sitting on the touchline, he has enjoyed the quality of their football this season as much as uh, their loyal fans have. Well, I think he would have done. I think there's no doubt that the defeat they suffered at Manchester United and losing that unbeaten run, it did hit them hard. It took them a while to recover from it. I think at times some of the football has been real quality from Arsenal. And I'm sure they'll bounce, bounce back next season stronger, better, and with other players as well. He has got a transfer kitty, and I'm sure he will sign some players in the summer. Mikel Arteta is going off, and he'll be replaced by one fellow who certainly won't lie down in the last 15 minutes here. Duncan Ferguson, the only man left in the Everton squad from the uh, last team to beat Arsenal at Highbury, that was nine years ago, the last Everton team, of course. Something always happens when Big Duncan's on the pitch, so it won't be any different tonight. Oh. challenge there from Pistoni, and Arsenal another free kick. Henri. Here's Edu. Reyes. Henri. Reyes takes over again. It's a lovely ball. Power him. Third camp. And he uh, closed him down before he could do any further damage. And it is Arsenal's throw in. A little bit quieter than he was in the first half, but his overall contribution tonight, absolutely magnificent. Oh, a slip suddenly has let Marcus Bent in. Senderos racing back to try and atone for the error. Well, it was more of an accident than an error. Watson couldn't survive the challenge from Campbell. Well, he put his hand up, Senderos. It was a slip, it wasn't so much an error. The problem for Marcus Bent. He's up there on his own, had nowhere to go. Good covering from Sol Campbell as well. A massive, massive final day of Premiership action on Sunday. Over on Sky Sports 1, we kick off at 2, 
with Fulham against Norwich. All the matches starting, of course, on the dot at three, so no one gets an unfair advantage. Southampton against Manchester United is our chosen game on Sky Sports Extra. All the news from all the other games as Bergkamp looks to make it six. That's the goal. The Highbury crowd really wants it. Six of the best. Well, apart from the Everton fans watching at home, is there any other fans in the country that will begrudge Dennis Bergkamp scoring that goal? Just a long punt down the middle. David Weir's the unlucky man, just tries to clear it. I thought he messed it up, Bergkamp, with the first touch. It was unlike him because it did squirm away from him a little bit. But the master knows where the goal is. Some of the finishing tonight from Arsenal has been world class. And that's another good finish. He fully deserves that Dennis Bergkamp. If they don't see him here next year, they'll always remember that goal at Highbury. He's had a fantastic game. A triple celebration for Bergkamp. He was 36 yesterday. He's just about to celebrate 10 years as an Arsenal player. Now he scored a goal. And listen to the reaction from the crowd here. There is indeed only one Dennis Bergkamp. Retire? You must be joking. On this form, he's still one of the best players in Europe. He's given a four-year contract in this form. <laughs> Forget the age. I think there's a bit of a myth in football about age. Who cares how old someone is? If they can play like Bergkamp, just let him keep playing. Wrap him up in cotton wool if you have to. Fantastic footballer. Only thing you do lose as you get older is pace. He was never particularly quick, and his mind is about ten yards quicker than everybody else. It certainly is. Yeah, the car coming up for Sol Cam, I think. Yeah, certainly a poor tackle on Duncan Ferguson. Tackle from behind, you can't do that anymore. You were quite, quite right, Alan, about Dennis Bergkamp. He's never been the, the quickest of players. He has lost a little bit of that pace he did have. But his brain's just so much quicker than everyone else. Um, I think he might be enjoying it tonight. Nearly a smile from the Iceman. I don't think Everton are enjoying it. Can they get one back? Malcolm Ferguson was close. Marcus Bent ball in. And now Edu breaks clear for Arsenal. Oh, that's a great ball for Wales as well. And they're absolutely flooding forward here, the red shirts. Of course, what the Highbury fans really want to see is a goal by Thierry Henry. Just over ten minutes to go, and the fourth best team in the Barclays Premiership are being slaughtered by the second best team. Ah, oh, unbelievable, Thierry Henry. That was worth the admission money alone. Did I really see what I think I've just seen? You did, and it was fantastic. We want to see the shot again from Reyes. It's the skill from Henri. We're not going to see it in this clip. The skill before then was absolutely brilliant. Good strike from Reyes. What's this from Henri? Not so much that one. What's this one? <laughs> see ya. Brilliant. It was Everton's misfortune to get Arsenal on a night like this. I think they truly, playing this sort of football, would have beaten anybody, and I'm including Chelsea in that. I think they'll beat anyone in the world, no matter anyone in the Premiership on this one. What a way to sign off your season. I'm sure Everton and Gibraltar have uh, had the advantage. Now the uh, fans here have been told that the players will do an 
up upon her, more or less uh, immediately after the game finishes as Big Duncan leaves his mark. Philippe Senderos obviously doesn't know too much about him if he's challenging him. No. But I said something always. Duncan's on the pitch. There you go. Don't get in the way of me because I'll shove you over and put you in the holding boards. He hasn't watched too many Everton games this season. Did you know that was coming? Nothing more frustrating as a player to be six goals down and having a defender trying to rush the ball out of play. That was always on the cards from Ferguson. Hey, hey. Well, David Moyes is an honest man. I'm sure he just holds his hands up at the end of this and say. What can you do when they're in this mood? What can you do when Thierry Henry's playing like that? And Bergkamp, like he is. And lost count the nutmegs tonight. That's been sensational stuff. I think David Moyes, I mean, it's very easy to be critical of Everton and say they've been poor, and they have been poor tonight, but I think it is one of those occasions to more sing Arsenal's praises rather than say about Everton again. Absolutely right. Gas. Henry with another audacious little layoff to Lowry. Doesn't get them all right, does he? No, he doesn't. Just about nine out of ten. There goes Big Duncan again. Senderos perhaps has learned his lesson. I'm not sure he has, has he? <laughs> if, he had, if he had done it, oh, a little bit of verbals as well, yeah. Only toughening up. Two games against Duncan Ferguson should do the job. Certainly will. He's a winner though, isn't he? Duncan Ferguson won't take too kindly to coming on and his team losing 6 0. I don't think you can fault the Everton players for effort. There's not been one of those occasions where they haven't tried and they haven't put the effort in. I think they have put the effort in. They're just playing against a superb team. There's Ashley Cole, who's had one of his quieter games tonight. The ball, Fabregas to Reyes. Edu. Henri. And a little party piece from the master. There you go. It was a great ball in. And it's turned home by Flamini for his first ever goal for Arsenal. The magnificent seven. That's another sensational goal. What's Thierry Henry? Absolutely brilliant. A little bit of juggling. What shall I do with it now? Shall I sling it in the box? No, I think I'll just check back. Send the dummy. Great cross. As Reyes does brilliant, doesn't he? Cuts it back to Flemini. And that is not an easy finish again. Lovely ball from Henri. Great vision from Reyes. Half volley back. A finish into the back of the net. And he enjoyed that one as well. Well, last season was a record-breaking one for Arsene Wenger's team. Tonight, they have broken another record. It's their biggest ever Premiership victory. And against an Everton team who have been so mean defensively all season. Ferguson on the far post, trying to get his head on that. Come back to Watson. That kind of night, though, hasn't it, for the men in blue? Well, it has. Is he satisfied now? I think he is. Yeah, just about smiling, Arsene Wenger. Look at the attempt on goal. You don't see that too often in a Premiership match. And even more telling, look at the attempts on target. 13. Seven goals as well. The 
it's now getting embarrassing for Everton. They're on the end of the biggest hiding any team has had in the Premiership all season. Nothing is going to spoil what has been a magnificent campaign for them. But this is a night they will want to erase from their memories very quickly. They'd better make sure they don't concede two more goals before the end, because I think I'm right in saying Manchester United got nine, didn't they, against, Ip against Ipswich many years ago. That's right. And certainly don't want to equal that. When you think of some of the saves that uh, Richard Wright has made as well, it could so easily have been around that total. Yep. He's had a good game, the Everton goalkeeper. Henri, is he going to add to the score? Not this time. Well, he is human. There won't be too many times where Arsenal gets seven and the master doesn't get one. I know he's only played the second half. But he's been brilliant since he came on. I think you could say it's been a decent fitness test. <laughs> Just a little bit. I don't think Arsenal may be too worried about him in terms of the cup final. Might need to protect him a little bit in training. Give him a little run out of the weekend. But I think he's fit and rearing to go for the cup final, as he's sold Campbell. Not been a very good 24 hours for Manchester United. May the 21st is another date, another game, another challenge. It wasn't a very good throw out by Lehman. I think he's uh, forgotten what the ball looks like. Just want to hear that final whistle now and get out of here. I think they wanted to hear it at half time and stay in the dressing room. It's got even worse in the second half. So is the weather, by the way. Can you just check the calendar, TC? Is it really <laughs> May? It's freezing. It feels like January. Flag had gone up long before Henri hit that one. Was he offside? The problem is he's so quick, isn't he? Looking across the line, doesn't look offside to me. Look, look level. That was a good job for Everton's sake. He was given offside. You can see the frustration there from Henri. He wants a goal. I once played in a West Ham team that won 8 1, Alan, but I didn't score, and it is so frustrating. That's how Henri feels. Seven goals, hasn't scored. He wants to get one before the end. Ferguson's header on as Everton try to pull one back at least. Here is Ferguson. Oh, he's unlucky, the big man. Because he tried exactly the right thing. Lehman was off his line. It was quick thinking from him. Wins the original header. Comes back to him. There's Lehman off his line. He was worried. This wasn't on target, though. Reyes. again oh. took him on single-handedly now good ball as well two minutes of stoppage time what a relief that figure will be for all Evertonians they've proved their worth over the eight or nine long months of this season though Humiliating and embarrassing, though, tonight has been for them. It is merely a one-off, a very regrettable one, but a one-off all the same. Well, tonight has been humiliating and embarrassing, but it won't change the fact that Everton are going to be in the Champions League next year. And let's not forget that. They've had a fantastic season. This has been a night to forget for Everton, a night to remember from an Arsenal point of view, because it's been a privilege to be here and watch the football being played. But Everton will be in the Champions League next season. And it's important we don't forget that. Hibbert. Paul and Nadu go for the same ball, and the Brazilian produces a bit of trickery. Burkamp. Seconds remaining of Arsenal's home campaign in 
season 2004-2005. And what a magnificent way they have signed off. Still, one more game in the league to come at Birmingham at St Andrews on Sunday. What all Steve Bruce's thoughts are at this moment, by the way. And then, of course, a week later, the FA Cup final at the Millennium Stadium against Manchester United. I think Steve Bruce might play nine at the back on Sunday. I'm watching this, or at least. Dear, oh dear. What do you do? Is there another one in the locker? Reyes almost made it eight. Good save by Wright. Yeah. An embarrassed looking David Moyes shakes the hand of a delighted looking Arsene Wenger, whose team tonight have shown the whole nation the kind of football they're capable of playing. Dennis Bergkamp orchestrated things for them, particularly in a magnificent first half when he had a part to play in all three Arsenal goals. And then they added another four in the second half as they just turn on the start. Everton were blown apart. They simply had no answer to a display of breathtaking football. And the runners-up will be saying, bring on the cup final, bring on next season. And when you look around this Arsenal squad at the number of young players, and when you think that in a year's time they will be saying goodbye to Ivory and moving into the magnificent new home just down the road, the future is still very bright indeed for Arsenal Football Club. Chelsea and Manchester United, and maybe others too, will still be challenging for the major honours in the game, but Arsenal are in the frame and will remain there for a very long time to come. I'm sure of that, Tony. Well, I think they will. They will only get better. Some of the youngsters, Fabregas, Senderos, got some real class. Henri's improving all the time. When they move to that new stadium, they'll have more supporters, more income, which will give them more money to buy better players. It's been a fantastic performance tonight. I've really enjoyed watching it. And they will be back next season, bigger and better. How do you feel? I'm ready, says Thierry, I'm sure. Count me in for the FA Cup final. Edu might not uh, play in that. It'll be an interesting selection decision for Wenger to make because Edu has said he will be leaving in the summer. So does he pick him for the cup final or is this his farewell? It certainly is Highbury farewell and one he marked with a rare goal from the penalty spot. Ashley Coles has got a hearing uh, that he has to undergo next week, of course to uh, his alleged link with Chelsea. And Dennis Bergkamp, well, he's got some new contract negotiations to undergo. Well, even, I think, in their remarkable, historic, incredible, record-breaking season when they went through undefeated, I don't think I saw Arsenal produce football of the quality we saw tonight. I've got to agree with you, Alan. I think they had a fantastic season last year. I think at the start of this season, they played some really good stuff up until that defeat against Manchester United. But I think tonight, and I know Everton weren't brilliant tonight, in fact, they was poor, but you still got to play the football, you still got to create the chances. I think they was absolutely sensational tonight, and they would have beaten anyone in the world. And I've really, really enjoyed watching it. David Dean leads the singing, the man who, of course, identified Arsene Wenger as the right man to lead Arsenal out of the shadows. Well, I say out of the shadows, of course, by their standards, they'd had a couple of fallow years. But my word, what a good choice Wenger was. The first Arsenal manager ever to win three championships. Top scorers in the Premiership last season. Top scorers again this season. 86 goals they got now, and still one more game to come. Last season they had the best defensive record. That honour, of course, went in this campaign to Chelsea. And that's 
the area I'm sure that Wenger will be looking at with a microscope in the summer months before Arsenal come back for another Premiership campaign. But you know, in all those uh, recent run of wins, and that's 11 victories in their last 12 games now, Arsenal, apart from all the wonderful goals they've scored, have only let in two goals in the process. So maybe the process of getting that right has already begun. A wonderful, wonderful Arsenal performance. They have beaten, nay, hammered Everton by seven goals to nil. It's some way to end another season at Highbury. But there is more to come in the Premiership, of course. Survival Sunday featuring Norwich at Fulham from 2 o'clock on Sky Sports 1. Southampton at home to Manchester United from 3 o'clock on Sky Sports. Extra and particular interest in how West Brom and Crystal Palace get on as well. Three from four will be going down. Arsenal will be celebrating long into the night. George, was that as good, if not better, than anything you've seen from this Arsenal side over the past couple of years? I think it's equal to it, but uh, when they're on song like this, Marcus, they're, they're the best, there's no question about it. The only problem this season is when they had a big dip, you know, they were vulnerable, you know, especially defensively. You know, and the difference between them and Chelsea is when Chelsea's had an off day, they've still picked up three points. When Arsenal's had an off day, you know, they've not picked up any points, and that is the difference. Consistency, Chelsea have easily been the best team. But Arsenal, on this occasion, and they've played less a few times this season, probably the best football. We should remember that Arsenal are only four points worse off than last season when they more or less walked away with the championship, which just emphasises how impressive Chelsea have been. And the fact that Arsenal haven't been as bad as some people might have thought over the no, past I think it's months. been a good season for Arsenal, you know, considering last season undefeated for a whole year. There's no way that anybody can expect them, expect them to repeat that, that feat. And this season, yeah, they've, they've again finished up top goal scorers. They've got a lot of points. It was just that Chelsea did better. It was as simple as that. And they've put down something of a marker ahead of that cup final against Manchester United at the end of next week, haven't they? I think I said before the game, I said the way Arsenal have been playing, playing recently, they're enjoying their football. It's not, it's not an effort. You know, it's not a, a chore. They're enjoying it, and that's the way they were doing today. And when they're on like that, you know, they're really on song. They're, they're fantastic. But as I, again, when they play Manchester United in the, in the final, it won't be pretty <laughs> like that. I'm sure it won't. We'll take a break. There will be further reaction from Highbury when we come back. Hopefully we'll hear from Dennis Bergkamp. There was talk of this being his last game in the red and white. I think he's going to be in the red current next season, isn't he? Has been something special. Arsenal's biggest ever Premiership victory. Van Persie got the party rolling and they didn't stop. Pires with a cheeky one too. Brilliant dinked header. Everton did not know what had hit them. Dennis Bergkamp pulling the strings. Vieira with a wonderful finish. 3-0 at half-time. So often teams just drift off in the second half with such a comfortable lead. Not on this occasion. Pires with his second in Arsenal's fourth. Then a handball. You've got to put a bit of sympathy for Everton and Lee Carsley in particular. What else could he do there? But the referee set a penalty and Edu marked his final appearance in an Arsenal shirt with a goal. Dennis Bergkamp, we think he'll be back for more. <laughs> he made it six. Thierry Henry didn't actually score, but he helped to create a seventh. Brilliant pullback from Reyes as well. Flamini's first ever goal for Arsenal. And that concluded the entertainment. Doesn't make any difference to the table, of course, but it's a further indication, perhaps, of what may happen next season. 83 now from 37, just four points less than they had, plus 52 goal difference. Look at Everton's goal difference, zero. And that's where the action happens at the weekend. If Norwich win, they know they're going to be safe. But Southampton, Crystal Palace and West Brom are clawing to escape at the death. Let's hear from the man of the match, unquestionably, Dennis Bergkamp. And he's talking to Guy Havard. Dennis, what a very special night that was. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think uh, it was fantastic for us uh, to finish the season at the high level. Uh, great performance, a lot of goals, good football. So, uh, is there a part of you that fears it might be your last performance at Hyde? Yeah, of course, as long as you don't sign a new contract. There's, there's always some fear, but um, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks. Did you sort of approach it like that, 
maybe this might be my last appearance? Um, well, it's always in the back of your head, of course. You, you always, um, uh, there's always something. Yeah, you, you think about this game, like the last game of my game, quite special, a long, uh, long time of my career, of course, and um, uh, the, it's always in, in your mind. But again, it's um, hopefully we can sort something out. It was a magnificent performance by the team, but by you as well. I mean, you created goals, and eventually you got that goal yourself. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping for that. I think uh, it's a special night, and, and there is space to, to play. Uh, we, were, we were playing well, creating chances. So this, um, I was looking for the goal as well. What about the penalty when uh, it was given to Edu? Did they ask you to take it first? As well, yeah, but I think this was the best solution to come to have uh, Edu there. Um, yeah, he's, he's been fantastic for us, and uh, yeah, we can always look back on this game with, um, with a smile. I think. You said you hoped to sort it out. I mean, you had 38,000 Arsenal fans, 38,000 Arsenal fans singing one more year, one more year. I, I think you've got a popular vote. I think so, yeah. I think uh, they understand as well what, uh, what I really want, and uh, I think uh, the club will be sensible as well. Has it frustrated you at all that it hasn't been sorted out, that we are still speculating? Uh, yeah, of course. I'd, again, you, as, as soon as you made up your own mind, you like to uh, sort it out as soon as possible. But they must have their reasons why uh, it could take this long. Uh, uh, it's not the first time, of course. It, it, it does take so long, so I'm used a little bit used to it. But again, um, I'm quite confident that uh, it will be okay. Dennis, well done. He's the uh, Barclays Man of the Match, and hopefully we'll be giving you some more next season as well. Thank you.